Hi, welcome to Thursday's Facebook Live. We're pre-recording on Wednesday afternoon because Thursday is supposed to be very heavy rains and we didn't want to miss a week of sharing the great things going on here at NatureWorks. Usually around this time of year, your garden might be looking a little tired like mine is and you think, oh, the season's over, now I can rest or put my garden to bed. Not yet. There are exciting things going on and we want to let you know what's happening and what you can continue to do to garden and enjoy color and the foliage in your landscape and in your yard uh, for a little bit longer. So I'm starting off here just to show you what we've got going on with annual pots that you can either pot up yourself. We've got lots of annuals and some perennials to choose from that are just the right size to go in these peach barrels and uh, create the look that you want using the colors and textures that you like. And if you don't want to do it yourself, as you can see, we've got a wide range of color palettes addressed in the ones I'm showing you for an example. This one is absolutely stunning in all whites and greens. Uh, so there's no excuse for not having something going on color-wise, because if you don't want to do it, we'll do it for you. And it's just so much fun to enjoy all of these things and then to dress things up with holiday colors. Even the white pumpkins tie in so nicely with this. So that's the, probably the easiest thing you could do if you wanted to add some color to your garden this time of year. The other thing to do is you can also bring these inside and put them on a center hall table or a kitchen island, or you can do smaller versions of these. So you can think creatively of how you can still uh, enjoy the plants of the fall. And there's some other really interesting things that we wanted to show you. And I'm going to walk over to some really great fall shrubs. And Jess is probably going to pan some of our fall displays as we walk over. Um, but as I said, things are still happening in the garden. And especially some of the buried things. All of those fruits and flowers that we saw earlier are now turning to the fruit, the berry. And we've got some great shrubs. We've had a lot of people looking for our calicarpa, the beauty bush, and it has these great purple. This is um, early amethyst, and it starts off with flowers, and then the 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 little uh, berries turn purple going up the stem. This also comes in a white variety too, which is really lovely. But the purple really is very, very striking. It's great to use in uh, floral arranging inside the house if you don't want to have this nearby where you can see it in the yard. But it's a great shrub this time of year. If you do take it inside, take the leaves off if you're going to use it in uh, floral design because the leaves shrivel up rather quickly. Um, unfortunately, they don't usually last long enough to use them uh, in Thanksgiving, but certainly in October arrangements, they're really excellent. Another one that's really a, a different sort of color in shrubs is the physocarpus. And there are many varieties of physocarpus. The most common that you may have heard of is Diablo. This is really interesting because they bloom in the early spring um, or early summer, beginning of June, and they're blooming now, and it's because the grower has sheared them off at the top. The, this variety, Little Devil, gets three to four feet tall and wide, and is not quite as arching as Diablo or Copertina, but, and has much smaller leaf. It's really interesting. But the form, color, texture, and the extra bonus of having had been sheared and the flowers forming right now is just lovely. So that's another great addition. So the berry theme, I'm continuing over here just to show you what we have. We've got various winter berries. As you can see, they come in all different colors as well. And then we've got um, Ilex uh, with the black berries. And one other shrub that I wanted to point out, which is such a versatile native shrub that I've used in my gardens as a substitute for burning bush to get me some of that red color that we love to have this time of year. This one's just starting to turn a burgundy color and we'll get a brighter red. Some of the inner leaves, you can see that red color. And this is the Itea virginiana. And this has a really great white flower. You can see the remains of the flowers that blooms around July 4th and it has an arching habit and it's just a lovely addition to a formal bed or a more natural bed as well because it's, it stays where you 
keep it. It sends off runners and I end up cutting them back at the roots to kind of contain it where I want it to be. But I have lots of other plants in the garden beds where I have this. When I was thinking about what really great perennials we have still on our benches, I, um, I was inspired to start pulling, to pulling the perennials and putting them in our wagons. And when people come here to shop, they often get a wagon and they start filling it up and they stop when they've filled that wagon. So I started thinking like our customers and thought, boy, if I picked up the one thing that I really wanted to have and I built a little garden in my wagon based on whatever initiated that, that choice, that initial choice, what would it look like and what might you be interested in seeing? So I'm going to show you three examples of wagons and what I've pulled together and uh, kind of talk you through it. I'm just going to pull this around here so you can see. And I'm going to first start off by telling you what I've tried to do is vary texture, vary color. And I think this is a great example. I started off by pulling up this sedum, which is sedum lidocens. And it's a ground cover sedum that's kind of blue with the leaf and this bright pink, which is more like sedum neon, but brighter than an autumn joy and stays low. But I just want this to be a plant that I look at all year long. It's just absolutely gorgeous, those two colors together. So I started to build my garden in a cart around this particular plant. So I wanted a pink and I didn't want to grab another sedum and put it in the center of this. So I grabbed the Maxim, a Magnus, sorry, Echinacea, which has this huge blossom and a huge cone in the center and has more blossoms to come and blooms in the summer and continues to bloom right now. And looking at that, it's the only place where I really appreciate pink and orange together. So I was like, let me build on that a little bit and went and grabbed these heuchera uh, caramel, which I have in my garden for several reasons. One is they do do okay in full sun or part sun, um, which would go with all of what you see here. Most of the time, heucheras prefer some shade and not full sun. But these have worked well in my garden, so I thought I would just share that tidbit with you. The other thing I like about it is the underside of the leaf, which you see just in the plant itself, ties in with that wonderful pink. And the orangey color of the caramel, I think, ties in nicely with the cone of the echinacea. So I have these on either side. These would get much bigger and be in proportion to the echinacea. Flanking the echinacea, I have Penstemon Husker Red, which is past bloom. But what I like about it is that it has multiple interests. Earlier in the summer when it is blooming, it sends up tall white flowers on a dark stem. And now this time of year, when you cut back those stems, this is what you're left with. It's absolutely stunning. The reverse side of the leaves is that pinkish color and the veining on the top side is also that wineish pink color. So it looks fabulous in the garden all, se all season long. And then I filled it out by adding in these Elijah blue uh, fescue grasses which tie in with that blue color that I like so well and the size of these grasses stays a little bit bigger than this, mounded and round, and they do send up stalks too. Um, but it's just a great sort of plant to either edge a garden with or to sprinkle in to give a pattern to a garden because of the distinct color and form and size. Um, it's really quite wonderful. And in the center, I've gone darker with an ajuga. This is black scallop and will spread very nicely and tie into the darker colors of that pink that you see throughout the wagon. So this is the sort of thing you do. If you come in here and you pick up this plant, we can help you fill out the rest of your garden in a cart with other things that will go with it. Um, and this is the fun of shopping in a place like NatureWorks is you've got knowledgeable salespeople that can help you put this together, but also you've got these options to put together. So we're very excited to have full benches to be able to do something like this. So that's my first cart and I'm going to set it over here. 
and cart number two. It's like door number one, door number two, and door number three. So what did I start with on this one? Let me throw this down over here. I started with the muley grass because this looks like nothing until the, it looks like a grass, but in the fall, these pink plumes that only with the background can you see the little seeds on it all the way up. It looks like a paintbrush from here to here, but the seeds extend another six inches above that. But the effect in massing this in three or five of these is to see this pink color um, and most of the grasses have a, well, might have a reddish tone, but this is truly a pinky violet tone to it. So that's why I chose the Mammoth Mum uh, Coral coral Daisy to go in the center. If you haven't seen our selection of mums and asters, you've got to come in just for that. They're just truly terrific. And this is just one example of a perennial um, mum that's fantastic. So picking up on that yellow in the center, I grabbed this really interesting solidago, which is goldenrod. This is golden rockets. And this is not what you're used to. I'm going to show you a goldenrod in a minute. This goes straight up for two feet and then has a profusion of yellow at the top. So it's quite a different form of goldenrod and really interesting. And a different form too with the heuchera. Remember I used the caramel in the last wagon. I grabbed this one, Blondie, which we just got last week, which again has the pinky hues to it. But what it has is a bloom, and why it's called Blondie, is this blonde blossom that ties in with the yellow in the center of the mums and the yellow with the goldenrod. And this you will have all summer. And heuchera, or coral bells, all have a blossom, but it doesn't last all summer long. So this is quite extraordinary. And it's a very distinct, you know, bottle brush type versus the light and fluffy coral bell blossoms on other heuchera. And then in the center in the front, I've got an aster, which is a great ground cover called Snow Flurry. Have you ever seen an aster that looks like this before? So it kind of spreads out just like it, you're seeing in terms of its form and has these tiny white daisy flowers with light yellow centers. And it does look like a snow flurry. It's stunning. So this is great on the, in the front of a garden. And then I've continued with the yellowy green and picking up on Sedum Angelina. Again, Sedums have such a variety of colors um, and they can be used in so many ways. They do like hot and dry, um, but look at the color of this with the yellow and the lime green color. It just is really lovely. So again, I started with the grass and then I went from there and was able to pull together other real winners that make for a lovely combination. So that's garden in a cart number two. And we have one more. And I mentioned several of these plants I don't know, maybe three weeks ago when I did Facebook Live uh, another time. And so I started this wagon with this plant, which is known as Fall Ageratum. And most of us are familiar with this look as an annual Ageratum. But this is a perennial Ageratum and blooms much taller than the annual Ageratum. This plant, I have two of them. They spread like crazy. Um, I come home and I'll see three or four monarchs on this. I don't see monarchs anywhere else in my yard. And this is the plant that I see them on. So I'm absolutely thrilled with this plant. So that's in the center. And then I built around it. And this one, Jess turned me on to. Jess is the one behind the camera. And this is Aster Ad Adustus nanus. And this blooms from July through October and stays small. Why wouldn't you have this in your garden somewhere? Uh, we talk about assets of a plant and the long bloom period with perennials is what we like to go for in most cases. And this is a great kind of glow lilac color 
uh, and, and little yellow centers. It's actually finishing up here in the pot, but even the little seed heads are just adorable as well. So I threw that in and then went with another solidago because the solidagos are just so beautiful and there's so many different varieties. This is fireworks. And as you can see, it looks just like its name. And when Nancy saw I was using this plant, she said, oh my gosh, have you seen it down in one of our demonstration gardens? And she walked me down there and she likes to top it off and showed me what happens when you do that. So you can see where she's topped off the plant here and it's sent out these side fireworks that are almost horizontal in nature. I mean, it's stunning. I would use that, of course, in the flower design, but in the garden, it just looks like this explosion of fireworks because this spreads outward and it just is a fabulous, fabulous look. And imagine that with this close by. And then I've used a Rudbeckia because there are so many different types of Rudbeckia. I like this uh, small flower. Oop. And this is um, Fulgita, variety of Fulgita of Rudbeckia. And this gets about three to four feet high, as does the fireworks. And finally, we have a Caryopteris in bloom. I've been talking about this one too, and it still isn't as large as it would be, but it sends off these glow purple flowers up these woody stems, and the bees go nuts for this. First thing in the morning when I walk my dog, they're already all over this. So it's a great plant for the fall. And then I was looking for something yellow to kind of finish off the lower area with, and I found these Stugia Rheingolds, which have the kind of a goldy texture, goldy color to it, and this nice texture. And they would be great in a garden in the front, and they won't get that big. In balance with everything else, they'll be much larger than they are in that pot. But here's another one where you start with something you love and something you have a good reason to have for those monarch butterflies, and then build around that. So next time you're here shopping, grab a card and think about building a garden. Um, and we would love to help you do that. So we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.